clear? I'm talking about the most disastrous contestant of the whole season. Like, they really took things to a new level of bad. Snot. Fuck oh off. Useless fucking pieces of shit. And just like that, Jason Underwood grabs the title of the most hated chef of season four. Seriously, there's no competition here. He's clearly the chef that everyone just can't stand. It's not even a close call. He's definitely the one who gets the most negativity and eye rolls from the audience. I'm no longer just Jason. It's Jason who won Hell's Kitchen and has a pocket full of money and has to beat women off with a stick for God's sake. Paul Wall and Michelle Ahas, and it's no surprise why. This guy has made a name for himself as a total misogynist, always belittling women like it's his personal mission. The red team, which was entirely made up of women, couldn't stand him. And honestly, who could blame them? Picture this. You walk into a kitchen, acting like you're God's gift to the culinary world, yet you can't even be bothered to lend a hand to your team. That's Jason in a nutshell. Overconfident, arrogant, and completely oblivious to his actual lack of talent. As soon as the kitchen started to heat up, Jason's mistakes piled up faster than a souffle gone wrong. He was put in charge of the appetizer station, but from the get-go, it was a total catastrophe. So what did Jason do while everything was falling apart around him? You'd think he'd be busting his tail to fix things, right? Nope. He decided to take a smoke break on the patio like nothing was wrong. Where's Jason? Where is he on the appetizers? Where is he? And if that wasn't bad enough, he even picked his toes while he was at it. Jason! What's he doing? Jason! Jason! Yep, you heard that right. Ramsey's reaction? Absolutely priceless. When Jason finally made his way back into the kitchen, things only spiraled further downhill. First off, his risotto was a complete train wreck. And I'm not talking about a minor mistake here. No, it was so bad that Ramsey forced Jason to try it himself, just so he could truly grasp how horrible it was. The entire situation was a disaster. At one point, Bobby had to step in and call Jason out, telling him straight up that it looked like he believed he could run the whole kitchen by himself. The pretty pathetic six out of eight pieces. And to make matters worse, the women's cuts turned out to be way better than his. Not only did he spill all the details about his team's strategy, but he also started bad-mouthing his own teammates. Enter Ben, who was fuming like a volcano about to blow. Challenge came around. Ramsey's patience with Jason was seriously wearing thin. And honestly, who could blame him? Jason was supposed to be in charge of desserts. How terrible do you have to be to get benched in a cooking competition? When Jason finally made his way back to the kitchen, things just didn't because otherwise, why keep him around when he's booted out others for much less? Because I did disappoint my team in failing. You made one big mistake. Yeah. But you're very keen to volunteer yourself, which is not a good sign. And, hey, you might recall another time when this happened, too. It's one of those moments that really sticks with you, right? Have you got the qualities to become a head chef at Lake Tahoe? Yes, yes chef. No, chef, I don't. You haven't? I don't. Take your jacket off and fuck off. It's really not right, and honestly, it just doesn't seem fair at all. I'll be damned if I'm gonna lose to a team of girls. The only thing I'm gonna lose to a woman is like an ironing contest. Fun fact, Jason was the lone contestant representing Ohio for a solid 12 seasons. Now, just imagine this guy being the face of your state for that long. Pretty wild, right? Things stayed steady until season 16 came along. And who strolls in? None other than the fiery coop. This guy actually had the audacity to waltz into Hell's Kitchen and share his not-so-charming thoughts about going up against an all-girls team. So, let's not just shrug off Jason's sexist comments as just for the drama. Excusing that kind of behavior, whether it's subtle or straight-up hostile, isn't cool. I want to sleep at the end of the day, that's it. It's really not that hard. Sexist comments can have serious negative impacts on women affecting both their personal and professional lives. 
And let's be real, Jason didn't exactly have the cooking skills to back up his attitude. So let's see how he fared during the first service. When it was time to get things rolling in the blue kitchen, Jason, who was supposed to be handling appetizers, was nowhere to be seen as Ramsey called out the f It was a complete disaster. Ramsey had the other guys taste it, and surprise, surprise, they all agreed it was absolutely awful. All of you, run, Dominic, you lazy fucker, and you put your fingers in there. Because of this mess, everything had to be restarted, which meant Dominic had to toss out his scallops. Go for, go for. Ramsey was not having it and actually told Jason to sit at the pass and taste his own disastrous creation. One more minute. As Lou Ross tries to whip the blue team into shape, the red team has served appetizers to three more tables. Are we ready now with that beef? We're ready. He totally deserved it. And it seems like he knew it too. I should have fucking stayed home. You know, that's probably the only thing he said that I can actually get behind. But let's shift gears to what happened during the second service. Jason got into a pretty intense argument with Bobby over how the scallops were being cooked. Ben and Petroza did their best to calm things down, but Jason just couldn't let go of the feeling that he was being unfairly blamed for a mistake. Well, let us do it. Petroza, how long? On the Why are we fighting? Are. Everybody just calm down and focus. You know how it goes with him. He's always the victim in his own little universe, acting like the whole world is out to get him. As everyone's focus shifted to the main course, Ramsey picked up on an issue with Jason's halibut. Turns out, the fish was practically still swimming, and it came off the hot plate completely raw. One chef, this is not, 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 not cooked. Blue, come here you, Oi, all of you, come here. Looks like he could have used a few more reminders to zip it, huh? To get things back on track, Ramsey had Jason, Matt, and sous chef Scott roll up their sleeves and dive right into the mess to sort things out. Them fire, and you're sending me raw fish, but it's fucking cold, it's fucking raw. You won't believe what happened next. A customer sent back a halibut dish that Jason cooked, claiming it was practically raw. But Jason wasn't about to admit fault. He started making excuses and telling all sorts of tall tales. Ramsey, though, was absolutely fed up with Jason's nonsense. After giving him a serious dressing down, Ramsey decided enough was enough and called it a day, shutting the whole restaurant down. It's not mine. It's not mine. How dare you? It's just come back from the table. It's hard to believe, but the very next day, when they had the chicken cutting challenge, he walked in like he owned the place, full of this unwarranted confidence. He even had the nerve to say that the guys had the upper hand just because, well, you know. Yes, this is Ramsey's reaction after trusting Jason with the deserts. And this isn't what Jason had to say. I don't have a clue on this earth what I'm doing. I hate desserts, they're tedious. Women can make desserts, you know? It ain't yeah, because dessert making is obviously a women's thing, right? I mean, clearly Jason hasn't heard of pastry legends like Duff Goldman, Paul Hollywood, or Pierre Hermé. Honestly, Jason is just impossible. What a whiny pain in the neck. While he was working on the creme brulees, Jason wasn't sure if they were done or not. That's when LaRosse jumped in to help out, reminding him that sometimes you just have to trust the process. He definitely overstayed his welcome, about three episodes longer than anyone could bear. And when he finally got kicked off the show, he had the nerve to claim that Vanessa only made it through because she got emotional. But it doesn't stop there. He's either busy pushing for police violence against students in the US, or he's all over AI-generated provocative pictures of female politicians, liking, reposting, and commenting on them like it's his full-time job. And of course, he has also found engaging with porn bots on Twitter, sorry, I mean X. Jason is filthy, tweeting about wanting to have sex with animals, fourth image on this Reddit link, and harassing girls online. I mean, just look at some of his tweets and tell me what you think. A lot of people tune into these shows, and it's crazy to think how easily some could be influenced by his toxic behavior. 
I mean, even if the producers somehow missed seeing his true colors. Which, let's be honest, is hard to believe considering that they had to watch all his confessionals. Why didn't they call him out? Staying silent is just as bad as giving it a thumbs up. So, while I was digging around for more info on him online, I stumbled across something pretty interesting. Turns out, someone on social media recently called him out for being a sexist jerk on the show. They didn't hold back either, straight up labeling him as one of the worst people to ever walk this earth. And get this, his response was unbelievably dismissive. Just take a look at what he said. The best he could come up with was a casual LOL, as if he couldn't care less about the whole situation. It's almost as if he views the entire matter as one big joke. Honestly, it's infuriating. I can't stand that smug, indifferent expression of his. It makes you want to roll your eyes so hard you might just hurt yourself. His attitude is so detached from the gravity of the situation that it's almost as if he's living in a different reality. The way he brushes off genuine and a thesis in his show and baby and a pharaoh and binding during day. So there you have it. The chef who's earned the notorious title of being the most hated in Hell's Kitchen history. Whether you're a fan who finds his boldness entertaining or someone who just can't stand his antics, one thing is for sure, he made an unforgettable impact. His actions, his attitude, and the drama he stirred up will go down as some of the most memorable moments on the show. But now it's your turn to weigh in. What do you think? Do you agree that he deserves this controversial title? Or do you have another chef in mind who's even more deserving of the most hated crown? I'd love to hear your thoughts, so drop your opinions in the comments below. And hey, if you enjoyed diving deep into all this intense kitchen drama, be sure to hit that like button to show your support. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so you'll never miss out on any of the wild moments and heated showdowns from Hell's Kitchen that we cover. If you thought this video was shocking, just wait until you check out the next one. It's even crazier!